Hi, this is Michael Kennedy, and I'd like to take you on a quick tour of a little application I wrote that shows you how to write dynamic link queries. All right, let's pull that up. Here's the application, and it allows the user to type in a substring that will find, here we're looking at a list of authors, so it'll find an author by name, it searches for a substring either in their first or last name. Also, it takes all the states and you can find an author by state, and you can order the results by different, uh, different criteria like state or first name or last name or, or even dynamic columns computed through an inner join like a, like a book count or something here. This application, if I run it, doesn't do anything yet. And there's several ways in which we could get data from our pubs database, which is where this is going to come from, from our pubs database into our data grid here. Of course, what we want to use is link. So let's go look at that here. And whenever we type in the text box or we select something from the combo box, all of these are just going to call refresh results, refresh results. And of course, that's also called during load. So here in this refresh results, I want to write a link query that will populate my data grid with the correct authors given all the filtering criteria that may or may not exist depending on what the users have typed. So we could start out with a simple link query that would just get us all the authors. like Something like var basic query equals from a n. Now I have created a link to SQL data mapping here. We've got the authors, and we've got the titles, you know, the titles the authors wrote, and then this normaliz normalization table to pull them all together. So I've created a pubs data context, and this is standard link to SQL stuff. So if I wanted all the authors, I just say from A and pubs.authors, select A. Then back, you'll see here, if I switch over to the design view, you'd see that I'm using a object data source to the author class. That is the one that was generated by the link to SQL tables. So I will just say, um, author data binding source, or author binding source, data source equals basic query. So if we run that, you'll see we'll have everyone. Okay, but we have no where clause, no filtering, no ordering. And this stuff is, of course, super easy to add straight into a link query. I could say, like, where a dot state equals California, order by a dot last name. And we'll have our, our results filtered. You'll see we only have the California people and we're ordering by last name ascending. We haven't wired that up here yet, but we're going to. That gets more difficult though when what if they haven't specified a state? You know, I've, I've got this constant all states that, that is the first thing in our drop down list up here. We'll pull that down. All states and then we have the one we want to filter. So if they select all states, I don't want this where clause. And similarly, if they type a substring, I want to search for that substring. But if there's no substring present, then you know, avoid that, that filtering aspect as well. And also, order by, what do I put here in order to figure out how to order by this stuff? Um, there's all sorts of ways in which you can go about working with this problem in link. And what I want to show you is probably the 80% case that will take care of most everything you have to do. The key to understanding how all of this works and how we can make this dynamic is that this query, this thing which is really an I queryable of, what is it, author, basic query, uh, query, those two lines mean the same thing. This I queryable, when used in the context of link, this expression doesn't actually do anything. It creates the potential to execute a query, but it doesn't actually execute until we loop over it in a for each statement or until we data bind it here, or we say something like dot to list to array. Because this thing hasn't actually executed, we can conditionally add more and more constraints onto it. So let me uh, take away these here. All right, just get back to our basic query. And let's pull some of this stuff out as um, a method. So I can go over here, I'm using Code Rush. It's my favorite plugin. So we'll go over here and we'll say extract a method and it'll say get basic query. So I want to create a method called get basic query. And I can just inline this result 
don't need to say anything, but something like this. From A in pubs.author, select A. Just get us started, okay? So here, you know, that might have other aspects to it, but let's just say here, we'll get started. And now I want to filter potentially on two criteria. Remember, we've got, we possibly want to filter by state, and we possibly want to filter on this substring. So here's the magic. I can say something like this. I can even simplify this if I wanted and say var. I'll say it here. I'll say var filtered query equals from a in basic query. Whoops. It was trying to help me, wasn't it? Where, now I can apply this filter. And I can say a dot first name dot contains. And of course, let me, uh, I can say text box author name filter dot text and I even want to trim that back well, in case there's spaces I don't care about that I use a little code rush magic to make a temporary variable um, substring because I want to use this in a couple places I'll say that or a dot last name dot contains substring Oops. substring Oops. then I want to say here select a so that's all well and good, except you know, now I can go into the filtered query. But I only want to run this in the case where the substring is not empty. So I'll say something like this. I'll say first, this is equal to basic query. And then if substring.length is greater than 0, then I want to say filtered, not first name, filtered query equals this. Fix that up. There we go. Only apply the filter in this case here. So now we can go and extract another method. And I'll say uh, get filtered query by substring. All right, and we're just going to return that. So in this case, if somebody's actually specified a substring to search for, then we're going to take this existing query here, and because it hasn't executed yet, we're going to be able to basically append onto the query this where clause, where the first name or the last name contains the substring. Okay, and I also want to filter this in another way. Let me make this a slightly fit on the screen better. I also want to say var filtered query2 equals, and I'll do this a little bit differently, make this method differently. I'll say um, get filtered by state, and I'll pass it this first filtered query. And I'll use the control plus magic to generate this method from Visual Studio. And of course, it didn't quite get this right, did it, about the return value? Extract method would have worked better, but no problem. There. And here I want to say if the selected filter, so I'll say um, object item equals, and we have this in a combo box uh, state dot selected item. And for some reason, when this first starts up, it comes up as null, even though you notice I'm saying selected selected state is the first one. So I'm going to throw in a little error handling here. So I'll say if it's null, um, then I'm going to return all states. There, this constant that I wrote. But if it's not null, I just want it to be equal to this. So then I'll say if item dot to string is not equal to this constant. So if there was actually some other some other state selected, like California or Kansas or whatever, then I'm going to update my filtered query. I'm going to take and write another link statement. I'll say return from A and filtered query. And this may or may not have additional filters from our, our substring piece on it, depending on what was typed in. Where A dot um, state, in this case I want to do it equals item dot to string. And then, of course, still select A. Else, if that's not the case, if it's just the plain old thing, we'll just say return the filtered query. Oops, filtered. Come on, IntelliSense. 
help me out here. Filter query. Okay, so again, we're passing in an existing query that we're building up over time. Please don't do that. And if somebody's selected a state to filter by, then we're going to add on another criteria, another where clause. Otherwise, we're just going to give back the existing query. Here we'll say filter query 2. Now I want to apply some ordering to this. We'll say var ordered query. And we're going to say that this equals from well, this one's a little bit trickier, okay? Because what I want to do is I need to actually, depending on what field was selected, my drop down here. Let me pull that up again. Depending on what field is selected up here, either book count, city, last name, I got to pick a different piece in my aware clause. So the simplest way to do that is actually uh, with a switch statement. So I'll say ordered query. We'll start out with just filtered query 2. And then I'll say switch. And I wrote this method called get filter by state. Basically, it looks at the strings in there, and that converts it into enumeration. And oh, that would have been nice if we got a little more help here. I'll show you some nice uh, magic that the switch code snippet will do. So let's say, what did I call it? Author order type, so I'll say type equals that. Of course, this should be smart enough to work anyway, but if I say switch type enter, then of course, it'll generate all the ones we need here. And in the case of the first name, I want to say ordered query equals from a in filtered query to uh, where, not where, order by, uh, first name A dot first name, select A. In the case of last name, we'll just put last name, oops, that's not last name. In the case of city, we just put A dot city. State, yeah, you can see how this works. Not too hard. Of course, it's a little bit of a pain to do this, but it's not terribly hard. Link saves us so much uh, on down the road, so it's kind of worth all the trouble statements here. This book count is a little bit interesting because when we generated the author class, like where's author? Here. If I say go to definition of author, there's this pubs generated one and added the ID and the state and all that. But there's also this other one that I added here, taking advantage of the partial class aspect. And this actually delegates into that normalization table. It says, well, how many records do you have for titles given this particular author? And navigates that structure created by link to SQL. So here, we're just filtering on that piece. And then by default, if there's nothing left, I'll just say ordered query equals, no, don't do that, please. Ordered query equals filtered query too. OK. And then, let's see, I want to take this guy. It takes a parameter, does it? Get filter query by state. Maybe that's not the one I want. Right, instead of saying this, hold on. Instead of saying that, that get filter query, that was the other thing we already heard. I just don't want to say get selected ordering. Apologize about that. And then I'm going to set the value of this ordered query. Whoops, I can go ahead and set it like that. Then I'm going to apply the ordered query down here. Of course, this is terribly ugly looking, so let's pull this into its own method as well using Code Rush. Could use other tools, but hey, why would you do that? All right, so we're going to say get ordered query. And down here, it's trying to get a little help from uh, Restart, where it's not given a whole lot of help. But we can just say, you know what? Inline all this stuff, all this results. I can just everywhere just say return from the filtered query, order by first name, last name, city, state, or just return this. Okay. 
So here we have built up conditionally. Maybe we're filter we go we got a basic query. Maybe we're filtering that by a substring, maybe not, depending on whether the user has specified it. Maybe we're filtering based on the state selected or not if they've selected all states. And here we're ordering by whatever field the user has selected up there. And we're just going to data bind that to our grid. Let's give it a shot. Oh, what have we done wrong now? <laughs> that was unexpected, huh? Oh, it doesn't like my order by book count. Well, that's not good. I had it working before. Let's see. Order by order by book count. Book count is of course titles dot count. Let me try this dot. I could just navigate this directly. Oh, please don't do that. Come on. Sorry about that. No, I don't want to create unit tests, you stupid thing. Please stop. Thank you. I just want to type the word C, not create, just count. Make any difference? Probably not. I guess it does now. Well, that works just as well. OK, notice that if we have all states, then we should have everybody here. But if we pick something like California, It'll delegate into that. And if we type something like EE, -E, we'll just see all the people with E's in their name in California. And I could go over here and say, I want to sort by last name. I want to sort by book count. Right now it's sorting ascending. We probably want to sort descending there, see our best authors. Sort by city, Berkeley, Menlo Park, Oakland, and so on. So what we have here is a link, a data-driven interface based on link where much of the link query is built up over a variety of pieces here. Right? We start out the basic query. We add on several levels of filtering, potentially. Maybe, maybe not. We add on order ordering. Didn't want to do that. We add on ordering here. And then we data bind to that. And now notice, because this doesn't actually execute until we get here, let me, I guess Camtasia's hotkey is the same as breakpoint. So I've got to do it this way. Add a breakpoint here. F5. Now notice the first time I'm going to run, we'll run through this. We can go down here and we have the ordered query. And notice it generates SQL. Right now we're ordering by, let me order by something simpler. Come on. I'm going to order by a last name, say. And notice we just say select all the columns from authors order by last name. Okay, we don't have any where clauses, none of that. But it converts it down to SQL before it actually executes it. Let's run it again and pick a different a different thing. Like say let's say filter down to California. Now we have one where clause. We have where state equals at P1, the parameterized California, order by last name. Let's update this a little bit more. Let's put an E here. It's going to pause again, refresh the query. And now look at the where clause. Where state is equal to this and first name is like E, right? That's P1. Or last name is like E, you know, percent E percent, the, the substring format in SQL. Order by last name. How cool is that? Okay, so we've built up this link query over time. And then finally, once it's fully built up, we execute it and it comes out like the best SQL that you would write for this scenario. All right? So that's what I wanted to show you guys. Hopefully you've learned something here. You can visit my blog at www.michaelccennedy.net. That's probably where you found this video. And I'll put a post on this. You can download the source code. And I appreciate your time. Thank you.